Hello and welcome back. And for today's video, we're going to create this interesting looking simulation using the simulation node. And we'll also learn how to animate it to follow a curve. And no, we are not going to use the follow path constraint. We're going to create all of this in geometry nodes. So a lot of interesting things to learn today. Let's get right to it. All right, so I have this new Blender file here and we're going to quickly go to the geometry nodes tab here and let's click new to add a new geometry node group here. We will bring in a subdivision surface modifier and that is because I just need a little bit more geometry here to make this cube look a little bit more interesting i'm gonna add four levels of subdivision we also would like to just shade it we also would want to animate this sphere here that we have just created just so that it looks a little bit more interesting so i'm gonna add a set position node let's plug this in and then we'll take this offset and we'll bring in the noise texture so let's type noise and we'll take the color section the noise texture to basically animate it. but if you see the cube changed its position it's not in the center right now and that's because the because of the offset the noise texture creates and to take care of that we're gonna add a subtract vector math node so let's add that right now let's plug this into the offset we're gonna subtract 0.5 five out of it let's change this noise texture to 4d and we're going to take this w input and just type seconds just so that the noise pattern keeps changing every second so if i play this now every second there's a new noise pattern that is getting created currently the noise is way too much for me so i'm going to reduce it to one and i think good enough to start the next thing we'll do is we'll create a way for this object to follow a path so that we can create something similar to the follow path constraint that we generally use but to do that i'm going to duplicate the set position now and i will add a curve because we need a curve to follow so let's bring in a bezier circle and we're going to scale it and let's click on our object again and then click on this bezier circle and bring this in as an object into our geometry nodes we also want to make sure that we are always looking at the relative geometry of the object just so that if we scale it change position the geometry node should pick it up in real time so let's switch it to relative then we're going to take this geometry section here and we're going to add a sample curve and this is the one that's going to help us animate it let's take the position of the sample curve mode and add it to the offset of our object now as soon as i do that the object is currently sitting right on the curve and that's that's what we want now let's also click on all curves because we are not going to change the index of the curve anyways now if you look at this factor here if you change it from zero to one the object completes one rotation around the curve path. To animate our uh, simulation here, we're going to create a simulation of 200 frames. And for frame zero, so let's go to zero, we're going to add a keyframe here. Keyframe at frame zero, the factor will be zero. Now let's move to frame number 201. And we're going to change the value to one. And let's add another keyframe right here, right? So if I click on this, now I can see those keyframes. Now, if I play the simulation, if you see, there's one thing that is happening is that the cube is starting slow and then speeding up and then stopping slow as well. So if you don't want that, and if you want a constant speed all along the animation, what we can do is we can click on this sample curve mode and then click on both of these keyframes that we added do a right click and change the interpolation mode to linear you can see the speed is constant and it gives us a little bit more seamless animation now that we are done with the animation part of it let's get into how i created that trail of particles right behind my cube to create a trail of particles we're going to need particles so let's add a distribute points on faces node right after our set position node and let's join it with our original geometry so we're gonna add a join geometry node plug this in the output and let's also plug in our original geometry here if you see the points are created but they are moving right along with our cube but it's not creating a trail yet we're going to need a simulation node let's bring in something in geometry mode that is called a simulation zone we are going to plug in our distribute points on faces into the simulation node and let's plug that into the joint geometry node as well but yeah if you see now the points are not moving anymore. we are going to need a joint geometry node again so i'm going to duplicate the one that we used before and let's plug this in right here and let's refresh the simulation and fade again 
Now, if you see the trail of the points are getting created now, which is great, but it looks like there are ropes of points that are getting created. It's not dynamic at all. And that is because the seed of where the points are getting created is constant. So regardless of how much time passes, uh, it just keeps the constant position for each particle, which is basically creating an illusion of a line of particles. So to make it a little bit more dynamic, we'll take this frame from our scene time node and plug it into the seed of the distribute points and faces node. Now let's try it again. Now if you see, the distribution of the point is a little bit more dynamic now. And now that we are done with this, and that doesn't look good at all. So use the set position mode again. And this time we'll use noise texture. And let's bring in the color section of the noise texture again. We're going to need these subtract mode right after that, like how we did for our original noise texture, we will also need to plug the second output of the scene time mode into the W of this noise texture, just like we did for the original one. And also we're gonna change the scale for this one to one as well. Now if I play this now, everything is getting distributed more dynamically than what it was originally. It's just way too much at this point. So what we can also do is that we can duplicate the subtract mode and then we can change it to scale. Let's reduce the scale to about 0.3 and let's see what happens. Great. So we reduce the intensity of the noise. Now it's looking a little bit more like the particles are coming out of the cube and not just getting distributed randomly. Now you might have noticed another problem is that the entire trail is now filled with particles, which is not something that we want. What I also want to do is I want to make sure that if a particle is at a certain distance from the cube, it should reduce its size and get smaller and smaller until it is invisible. And there is a very simple way to do that. So we are going to take the output of the set position now and bring in a node that is called geometry proximity. And this node gives us something that we really need to be able to calculate that, and that is the distance from the original cube. So we're gonna take this distance, and we are going to plug this right into the scale of the particles, right? And how do we define the scale of it? We bring in a set point radius node, and let's take the distance, let's plug it into the radius. Now, if I ref refresh the simulation, if you look at it, the farther the particles are from the object, the bigger they are getting. And this is exactly opposite of what we want. So how do we reverse that? Well, we can use a map range node. And let's bring this in. We can reverse the minimum and maximum values here. Let's refresh it and let's look at it again. The particles are very, very close to the cube and then it gets almost invisible as soon as it gets a little bit away from Q. Let's change the values a little bit more. We don't need a scale of like one for it, right? We need the particles to be smaller. So I'm gonna bring it down, bring down the minimum value to 0 0.05. It's just making the particles very small, very quickly. And that's not what we want. So let's change the from max value at the top to let's say six for now. And Let's play it again. And this looks a lot better. And for that, we're going to take this from max value and add a random value here. We'll change the value somewhere between, let's say, 6 to 10. And let's bring this frame and plug this into the seed as well so that it changes every second. Let's play it again. And now it is a, it looks more organic than what it was before. There is also another problem which you can't see right now, but it's there. Uh, it's because particles are getting smaller but they are not getting deleted and what i mean by that is that if you see when the cube comes closer to the end of the animation the original particles that were there they, they start to come back so we have to find a way to delete this particle somehow the easiest way to do that is just bring in a delete geometry node and plug this right in here now, if I just plug this in, it's just going to delete everything. So we got, we would have to tell it what exactly to delete. So I'm going to take this map range value and we'll use a less than node or a compare node. And we can tell it that if the particle size is less than 0 0.01, I want you to delete it. And take this result and plug this into the selection. If you look at it, as soon as the particle size reduces to a certain value, it just 
goes ahead and deletes that particle. And the particles are also not coming back when the cube is coming to its original position. Of course, you can increase the density here to about 50 or 60 just to get a little bit more particles in, into the simulation so that it looks more presentable. The only other thing that is left right now is to add an instance on point node just to make sure that we are able to render all of what we created. For the instance, I used a cube. You can use anything that you want. Let's make sure that we are also using the size that we are calculating and the value of that size was saved in a radius. So we can just bring in a radius node and plug it here. I'm going to reduce the number of particles because I'm using a very low spec PC. I would also add a dynamic rotation in there. And for that, we'll use a random value change this max value to 6.283 which is 360 degrees for radians and then we'll duplicate the same time mode and let's take the frame and plug it into the scene so that the rotation is changing every frame when uh, the simulation is actually played out you can also click on your curve add some subdivisions to it so that you can change the path to look not just straight but change the way your cube cube is moving through the entire simulation. And yeah, like like I said originally, this entire thing is dynamic, so the, you can change the path to whatever you want, and we'll just basically follow it. But I guess that's about it for today's video. I really hope you liked it and you learned something new. If you did, please do like, share, and subscribe. I'm going to see you in the next one.